Hello, my fellow furniture creative. How are you doing today? I am going to show you how to create this water washed Bombay chest with a gorgeous Bohemian wedding transfer on the front. We are not going to get into the wood graining top, but I have that on other pro projects that you can look up as well. But today, let's get started. This is a much easier look than you might think. All right, I started with manatee gray as my base coat on the body. Now, we I did the top separately. The top had a lot of damage, and so we're not really going to address the top on this video. I just want to show you how I did this water washed look as a base coat underneath the uh, application of the Bohemian wedding transfer. So I did not prime the piece. I cleaned it really well until my paper towels came off clean with white lightning. I was not concerned about bleed through. This is not a real wood product. It's just a pressed wood and um, it had a really good surface feel to it. So I did not feel like it needed any primer. So I'm base coating with manatee gray, just working with quite a bit of water to make sure that I get in and around all of those carvings. I did not add those moldings. They are original to the piece. I found this piece on Facebook Marketplace. Can you believe that? Um, it was quite a find. It's very, very heavy. Any of these pressed wood pieces, if you purchase these online, be sure you take someone with you to help you lift them because they are much heavier than a regular wood piece. So my thought here is just to get a good base coat down so that I can do a water wash on top of it. Uh, we're gonna let this dry before we start that water wash. We'll be adding a lot of water and I don't want the wood showing through when I do that. So this is what it looks like um, before and after with just a base coat. I love to just sort of sit back and take it in because this is when the design starts to show itself to me. For some reason, I don't see design real well when I'm looking at the raw wood. So after letting that base coat of Manatee Gray dry overnight, I am coming in the next day with two different grays that I'll be using. I'm gonna use Gravel Road, which I'm working with right here. It's sort of a brownish gray or a gray with a brown undertone. And I am just applying it to the top of the dresser. I'm using it very, very lightly and with a lot of water. So I call this a water wash. So what I do often is I bring down one color and then I let the water sort of do its thing while I move down and pick up the second color. So right there, you see me um, tap down. I'm bringing in a new color here and this is hurricane gray. So I've got uh, manatee gray as a base. I've got gravel road gray at the top and I'm bringing in hurricane gray from the bottom. Now I do this because I don't want this to be just a gray piece. I want it to have a lot of variations in its grayness, if that makes sense. A lot of variations in color is what I wanna say, but there really won't be a lot of true color on the piece. It's just going to be gray. But when you work with a lot of a lot of grays or a lot of variations of any color at all and a lot of water, you add a lot of depth naturally. You can see that when I'm working with this, I'm moving my brush in all different directions. I'm working from side to side. I'm working up and down. And at this point, I'm not even using a different brush for each color. I just dip my brush into whatever color I want to bring into that area. And then I spray it with water and I on purpose want these colors to move in together. I don't want to lose a lot of the drips. I don't want it to be a drippy piece, but I want there to be some drips seen. Um, so sometimes you need to sort of let it dry. As you can see up at the top there, I'm not really working on the top right now. I'm letting that sort of set in while I focus on the bottom part. Now, something to keep in mind while we're watching me cover this in gray and water, um, when you use a lot of water, it's going to seep in between your drawers. So as soon as I get this fully covered, I use the little screwdrivers or those little pull handles there. I pull them open and I wipe out um, all of the excess water from the inside of my drawers. I've used paper towels and I soak up water that's gone to the inside because there's just really not any way to avoid it. When you wanna get this super water washed organic look, you're just going to have water seep into the drawer space. So now that the top has had a little bit of time to dry, I take my brush and I go back up to the top again, and I'm bringing in my second coat of Gravel Road. This is Gravel Road again, um, bringing it in, painting it down, adding some more water, and you just start building on your layers. It just depends on how how thick you want it to be, how dark you want it to be. Do you want to be able to see that very first coat of manatee gray that we put down? I really didn't. I wanted to have very, very little of that heather gray peep through, but the reason the base coat is there is so that the heather gray can peep through and the wood does not. Okay, so real quick here, look. Do you see the drips? Do you see them? 
that is what I wanted. Now I'm gonna go and just add very, very tiny touches of extra color and see that big brush? Get yourself a big daddy brush. You can put tiny little bits of touches like that anywhere you want, and then you just take that big brush and you sort of flap it back and forth over the color and it just spreads it into that gray so beautifully. And you can see there behind the transfer tube that I'm holding up for you where I added touches of blue um, and touches of a pale, pale pink and then just sort of blended it into the gray. I just wanted there to be a little bit of color that will make the colors in the transfer cohesive with the dresser itself. So this is the Bohemian Wedding Transfer. So those two long sheets that you just saw me hold up are actually meant to be used horizontally, um, like a swag across the front of a piece. They, uh, the two pieces should be like a left side and a right side going horizontally, but I wanted to use them as they were hanging swags vertically. So what I'm doing right here is cutting off these jewels, which I love the jewels, and I'm gonna replace those jewels here in just a minute, um, but I couldn't have them hanging sideways. It, it showed, I mean, it sort of gave away the fact that the piece was supposed to be hanging the opposite direction. But if you just remove them, you can hang the piece vertically, and then I can re-add those jewels in a vertical hanging direction, putting it at about that level. And you see me here cutting with the scissors. I just used my scissor blade to sort of slice between the two drawers. You don't wanna to try to apply the whole transfer at once. If you've got drawer divisions, go ahead and cut your piece, set it aside, and apply only what's gonna go on that top drawer. So do you see that flat line there? That's where it was supposed to actually meet with the other side. Uh, but since I'm using it vertically, we will tackle that flat line in just a minute. So now I've picked up my second piece of the transfer and I am applying it with the stick that comes in the tube. So it's on plastic sheeting and that backside is sticky. And so when you press that up against the piece, it will sort of stick to the piece. Not really hard sticky, like it's not gonna stick on like a sticker, but it will stick there enough that you can let go of it. And you wanna release your transfer in sections. This isn't something you wanna put in place, rub all over the whole thing, and then you can just grab that plastic and pull back. No, you cannot do that. The transfer is a really, really thin, thin skin, and it takes a little bit. Uh, you have to kind of work on releasing it in sections. So now I've gone down to my third piece or my third drawer, my third section, and I am releasing that as well. And I'm having to work around um, some some of those um, applique moldings as well. So when it gets a little tight, I just use my fingernail in place of the stick. It does just as good of a job. Okay, you'll see me here when I raise this plastic off, sort of rub this with my hand and my fingers and smooth it out. You need to actually do that with the soft, soft piece of um, sandpaper, a very fine grit, fine grit sandpaper as well when you have your transfer completely in place. Okay, so now what I'm going to do um, is cut out two very small bouquets that are on one of the other sheets. Each transfer tube usually has four sheets in it. So I'm going to cut out these small bouquets to, to tackle that flat line that's up at the top. I'm just gonna layer it. You can layer the transfers. That's what's so beautiful about them. You can build your own, make them completely unique. I could pull from other transfers that maybe had leaves or sticks in it. I could build and add to this bouquet if I wanted to. So I've chosen two bouquets. I just wanna make sure that when I line them up that that flat line is completely hidden and completely covered. And it just, it works so beautifully. I'm, I'm really, really, really happy with it. All right, it's time to add our finishing touches and a little bit of glam. And we're gonna do that with the Gilding Wax by Dixie Bell Paint. And I am using the silver today. Don't be shocked. I know I am a gold, gold lover. I go through these little tins of gold like crazy. And this is really the only can of silver that I've ever used so far. Um, but I do love it. It's really, really pretty. Um, the reason I'm choosing to use the Gilding Wax versus a metallic paint is, for one thing, they're a little bit more brilliant than the metallic paint. <clears throat> And they also are very, very hardy because they are an oil base. So you don't have to top coat them. Um, when they're dry, they cure and they are super hardy and will last forever. So I'm just using this on all of the raised moldings, which is a lot. There's a lot of it here. You can use your finger to apply this, which I usually do most often, but because there were so many of these, I decided to use one of the small artist brushes. This brush here comes from the set of Dixie Bell's Artist Brush Collection. 
Uh, you will need to use mineral spirits or something to clean this brush because they, this is an oil-based product, so it's not going to come out really well with just soap and water unless you use really hot water and one of the scrubby soaps. That will work for you. So I'll just continue to add this gold gilding wax, and we'll see if we can get this project wrapped up. So this is what the little tin can looks like. This is the gilding wax silver right there, and I'm going to use this on the hardware as well and i'm pretty sure i said gold a minute ago i meant silver 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 i can't get used to saying silver um so this is it on the hardware that's one hardware piece um before and one after i'm using the same little brush and i'm not covering it completely i, I am going for that antique look so i just sort of brush it on and leave that dark in the cracks and crevices there and i will cover all of these there you go you've got all four they do not need to be top coated you just need to let them cure and you are ready to go and that is it thank you so much i hope that you feel inspired to pull out your water bottles and a few colors of paint that you love and just try this water wash. I swear it is such a beautiful backdrop for transfers and stencils. It's a less than perfect look, and I think you will really enjoy this process. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be dropping a new video next Sunday.